In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your love. Thank you because we know you will not fail. I pray, Lord, touch everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you build up everyone. Raise up everyone. And whosoever is weak in the mind or weak in faith or weak in any way, strengthen them in Jesus' name. Your people will not go back empty-handed. Confirm your miracle upon everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Matthew chapter 11. Verses 4, 5, and 6. Matthew chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. The background to this story is that John the Baptist had been arrested by Herod. He was put in the prison. But then John had been talking about Jesus. Is the one coming. Is the very son of God. Is the lamb of God. He is the representative of the almighty God here on earth. He has come to reverse the fall of Adam. And everything we lost in Adam, he has come to restore unto us. All of a sudden, the same John was arrested. And so he wanted to know Everything I said about Jesus, all the revelation I gave about Jesus, is it true? Are you the one to come or should we wait for another? Maybe in your mind you are thinking, is Jesus going to be the one you are waiting for or should you wait for another? Will he heal you or will it be another that will heal you? Will he deliver you or will it be another person that will deliver you? Will he bless you? Will he save you? And will he supply all the needs of your life? Or do we wait for another? And the Lord Jesus then sent back to him, go tell him that this is what is happening. And because of all this is happening, we know that Jesus is the one we are waiting for. Tonight, Jesus is the one you are waiting for. He saves, he heals, he delivers, he restores, he removes mountains, he solves problems, he destroys the works of the devil. He is the one you are waiting for. There is no other one in your life that is going to bless you. Jesus will bless you tonight in Jesus' name. The blind receive their sight. It will happen to you. The lame walk, it will happen to you. The lepers are cleansed, it will happen to you. And the deaf, they hear. Jesus is the answer to your problem. But now, look at verse 12. In verse 12, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. You will take your miracle tonight. The force of faith, the fervency of prayer will give you everything you need from the Lord tonight. It will grant you in Jesus' name. We're talking about the old time power of our unlimited God. The old time power of our unlimited God. You want to settle it in your mind that this God we're talking about that created the whole of the earth 
created the whole of the universe. He is unlimited. Look at the vastness of the earth. And look at the distance of the sun to the earth. The distance of the moon to the earth. And look at all the other planets over there. And look at all the research men have made. And they have told us how large the universe is. And how many other planets we have in our galaxy. And it is this God that has done it. He is the unlimited God. Tonight... This God will prove himself to be unlimited in your life in Jesus' name. The old time power of our unlimited God. Three points very quickly before we pray. Number one, the supremacy of the unlimited God. The supremacy, the sovereignty, the greatness, the most high place that he occupies the supremacy of the unlimited God. Number two, the short-sightedness of limiting God. Anytime we limit God, we're short-sighted. We're measuring God with our own little strength. We're measuring the power of God with the scientific knowledge of man. We're looking at God as if God were a human being like us and it's short-sightedness i pray that god will brighten your sight it will give you revelation when you see the revelation of god your god will be big your problems will be small number three the supernatural signs from the unlimited god supernatural signs from the unlimited god number one let's look at number one the supremacy of the unlimited God. And when we're going to Luke chapter 1, supremacy of the unlimited God, we're looking at a chapter 1 of Luke. And reading from verse 35, the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Holy Ghost will overshadow you. The power of the Holy Ghost will overshadow you tonight. In the case of Mary, it was to be a fulfillment of the prophecy given 700 years before that a virgin shall conceive. But logically, it was impossible, but it happened. Historically, it never happened before, but it happened something is going to happen in your life. It may look biologically impossible, scientifically impossible, historically impossible, nationally impossible, but it is going to happen in your life in Jesus' name. The power of the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. Look at it now in verse, um, in verse uh, 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible with god nothing shall be impossible and mary said behold the handmaid of the lord be it unto me according to thy word that's all you need that's all you need to say anytime you see a great promise of god a mighty promise of god as if how will this happen how will that happen and then you are told it's the power of the holy ghost that will do it in your life then all you say is, Behold, a child of God, be it unto me, according to thy word, it will happen to you. Look at 42 of Job, chapter 42 of Job, verse 2. I know that thou canst do everything. When you come to the realization, I know my God, he can do everything. Are you married? He can give you children. Have you lost job? He can give you jobs. Have you lost your peace? He's the prince of peace. He'll give you peace. Uh, is your problem overwhelming you? As if you cannot take another step again, it will raise you up from that valley of despondency. New life will come to you again. I said new life will come to you again. I know that you can do everything and that no thought 
can be withholding from thee. The moment he confessed that, you know, all the chapters from chapter 1 of Job to chapter 2 to chapter 3, he was complaining, he was talking to his friend, I know I'm all right, I don't know why this has happened, I wonder the day I was born, and then the friends will say, you must have committed secret sin, if there's no sin in your life, why would all this calamity be on you? Then he will reply to them again, I don't understand, I look for him here, I look for him there, I couldn't find him, but, and the problem remained there. Days of complaint. Complaint does not remove problem. Murmuring does not uh, remove problem. Sorrow does not remove problem. Crying does not remove problem. Argument does not remove problem. But the day he said, I know that you can do everything and that no thought can be withholding from you. The moment he said that, look at verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. And the Lord turned the captivity. The day you realize that this our God is unlimited, and you voice it out, Lord, I thank you. You are my God. God, I know that you are my Creator. I know you sent Jesus Christ to save me. You sent Jesus Christ to give me life and life in abundance. The moment you confess that with your mouth, things will turn around in your life. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Multiple miracles are coming upon your life. In 2 Kings chapter 5, 2 Kings chapter 5, we're looking at it from verse 1. It says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto, him, unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in battle, but he was a leper. He was a leper, great man, but a leper. Great warrior, but a leper. A great professional, but a leper. He had a great position, but a leper. Great privilege, but a leper. Rich man, but a leper. And then in verse 3, and she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, what would the prophet that is in Samaria? For he would recover him of his leprosy. He didn't know about any program, about any prophet, about Elisha. He didn't know. But this mage, that they are taking from Israel, the land of Israel said, if my master will, be, will go to the prophet in Samaria, just like all these testimonies were hearing, my sister told me to come. My uncle told me to come. A medical doctor told me, have you heard something is happening there? Go. And then they come. As somebody told Naaman, somebody has told you, and you are here, you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. And then in verse 8, and it came and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he said to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Let them come. They will know there is a God in the land. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Father, my Father, our Heavenly Father, he will roll all their problems away in Jesus' name. And then the Lord, the Lord told Elisha what to tell him. Go jump in Jordan seven times. Leprosy will go away. Your flesh will come back. All that incurable disease, everything will go. Can I tell you something? Leprosy at that time was incurable. It was a disease that nobody ever got any healing from. It is like HIV AIDS today. And also it carried a terrible stigma on the people. And today... Our God who is unlimited, he will take HIV AIDS away from you in Jesus' name. And then eventually they pleaded with him when he wasn't going to, going to do what the prophet had said. And then verse 14, and then went he down 
had dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and it was clean. It will happen to you. I said it will happen to you. All the rubbish that the devil has put in your life until this day, the Lord will clear everything away. All that the enemies, enemies of progress, enemies of righteousness, everything they have heaped upon you, the Lord will clear everything away in Jesus' name. The heavy load on your head, heavy load on your neck, heavy load on your mind, heavy load in your family, that you are saying, how will this problem be solved? Thank God tonight, the problem is solved in Jesus' name. In John chapter 5, John chapter 5, I'm reading here from verse 5. John chapter 5, verse 5. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, 38 years. Can you imagine somebody carrying problem for 38 years? 38 years. Just problem, problem, problem. A person that was born at the time that problem started, that fellow is married now. That fellow is already having children now. And the man is still in that same problem. Do you know that the long-standing problems, mountains were brought here tonight, the Lord is going to take everything away. 38 years, it will solve the problem. 40 years, it will solve the problem. 50 years, it will solve the problem. Rest your mind. We come to this God who is unlimited. The supremacy of the unlimited God, the sovereignty of the unlimited God, the greatness, the might, the strength, the extraordinary power of the unlimited God. Look at verse 6. When Jesus saw him lie, lying down and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he says unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. Maybe that's what we're saying. I have no man. But thank God you have Jesus. I said you have Jesus. I have no helper. You have Jesus. You are a widow. I have no husband. You have Jesus. You are a widower. I have no wife. But you have Jesus. You are barren. I have no child. But you have Jesus. And you don't have anybody that will help you. You feel lonely. You feel alone. As if. The whole problems of the world, they just heap it upon you and there's nobody to even share it with. Thank God, Jesus, the friend of sinners. Jesus, the healer of the sick. Jesus, the liberator of those who are bound. Jesus is for you tonight. It will solve the problem in Jesus' name. He says, and when he saw him lie there, he said, will you be made holy? He said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. And Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Rise, take up thy bed and walk. It has happened again. I said it has happened again. 38 years of problem in one sentence, everything vanished away. Tonight is your night. I said tonight is your night. Long standing problem of many years, everything gone. And immediately, immediately, immediately the man was made whole and he took up his bed and he walked and the, on the same day was the Sabbath day. Well, that shows us a bit. We cannot read all the references because the whole Bible is full of the majesty of God, of the greatness of God, of the power of God. Let's go to point number two. The short-sightedness of limiting God. Anybody that limits God and say, can God do this? Can God do that? Can God do that? That's limiting God. I have HIV AIDS, can God heal me? That's limiting God. What's HIV AIDS? In the presence of the Almighty God. I have tuberculosis, can God heal me? That's limiting God. What's tuberculosis? In the sight of the unlimited God. I have you know, a child that has a problem of epilepsy, can God heal my child? That's limiting God. Can God do it? Can God? Of course he can do it. And tonight he will do it. I thought you were still awake. 
that amen will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 78. Psalm 78. I'm reading here from verse 19. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. And let us see that God is a God of power, a God of miracles. And anybody that says, can God do, can God do this? That's limiting God. Psalm 78 verse 19. Yea, they speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? There's no farm. There are no grocery stores. There's no place to buy this from, buy this from. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Well, you know the answer. God surprised them. God will surprise you. For 40 years, 40 years, every day of the 40 years, he gave them manna coming from heaven every day. And they said, can God, you cannot limit God. He can and he will. Look at verse 20. Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? We're talking about two million to two and a half million to three million people. How are we going to get water to drink? This is a desert place. And this is a wilderness. Look at all these multitudes of people. If we dig a well, we're not sure we're going to get water. And as we travel in the desert, the place is so dry. Can God give us water? He said, Moses, take the rod in your hand. Go to that dry rock there and strike it. And water came out. It will satisfy you. I said it will satisfy you. We cannot limit God. That's the point I'm making. Anybody trying to limit God, can he open the eyes of the blind? Can he make the lame to walk? Can he make the short legs grow? Can he give jobs to the jobless? Can he provide this? Can he provide? That's limiting God. He will. He will. He will in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 41. In verse 41, yea, they turned back and tempted God and they limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not His hand. Anytime anybody is limiting God, He doesn't remember. He doesn't remember what God had done. He has done it for others. Your turn has come. I said, your turn has come. Nobody now can say, well, He did that, but He cannot do my own. You have had Problems that are more serious than your own. Problems that are as serious as your own. Problems that people are thinking will take it overseas. Maybe they will solve the problem there. He did it for them here. This is the place of your miracle. This place, God established this place because of you. God brought this revival time because of you. Anytime you are weak, anytime you are sick, anytime you have a problem, remember... The unlimited God is here for you. Every problem will be rolled away in Jesus' name. You will not die prematurely. You will not die before your time. Everything the Lord has appointed, you will do here before you go for your reward. You will do an accomplish in Jesus' name. Look at verse 42. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. Because they didn't remember what they ought to remember. That's why they limited God. I will not limit God. I said I will not limit God. Your miracle is on the way. Second Kings chapter 7. The short-sightedness of limiting God. The short-sightedness. Can he heal me? Can he do it tonight? Can he bless me now? Can he take all this sorrow away? All this bad luck, all this curse, all this yoke, all this torment of the enemy, all this shame, all this stigma upon my life. Can he brighten my life? 
Can it make me to go in the path where I will feel satisfied, feel fulfilled, feel honorable? Am I going to carry this kind of shame and reproach for the rest of my life? No, you will not carry a reproach anymore. I said you will not carry reproach anymore. We must not limit God. God will do what he has said he will do. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. It will be unto you according to your faith. Second Kings chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord, on whose hand the king lead, answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be thus limiting God? They had been in farming for many years, seven years. And it appeared, how will this ever end? And they came to a very serious situation. They were eating what they shouldn't be eating. They lost all compassion of their neighbors. They lost compassion even for their children. Because the hunger drove them to the very extreme. And then the king came unto, unto the man of God. And the man of God said, by this time tomorrow, the problems of many years will be over. As you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll find the problems of many years, they are all gone. What you have cried about for seven years, for ten years, for fifteen years, you wake up tomorrow, praise the Lord, no tears anymore, no sorrow anymore. All the heartache is gone in Jesus' name. You have somebody in the at home because if this is not your stage and that person you left that person with problem this coming week you'll get um, you know telephone that that person you have been concerned about healing has come deliverance has come and because of you miracle will come to them in jesus name you know when elisha the man of god said this then this man limiting God he said if the Lord will open the windows in heaven might this sin be and he said behold thou shalt see it with thine eyes but shall not eat thereof look at the punishment and look at the judgment and look at the burden that came upon him because of limiting God you will not limit God anymore. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. The short-sightedness of limiting God. The short-sightedness of limiting God. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 11. Luke chapter 1 verse 11. It says in verse 11, And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right hand of the altar of incense. And when Ezekiah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. God is sending something good unto you. All your prayers of these many years, God is sending the answer to you. You know, the barrenness of many years, you think now there's no hope anymore. Hope has come for you in Jesus' name. But the angel of the Lord said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for as thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt have joy and gladness. Thou shalt have joy and gladness. Zechariah is not here. I'm talking to somebody here. Thou shall have joy and gladness. And many shall rejoice at his birth. Something is going to happen to you. Many will rejoice. Your family will rejoice. The people that knew you before and they said, ah, so and so, so and so, so and so, as if the end has come for you. 
you are just beginning to live now. A new strength, a new power, a new energy, a new provision coming upon your life in Jesus' name. And ye shall be great. What will come out of your life will be great. In the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. But many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit of and power of Elias, that's of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Here is limit. God now and Zechariah verse 18 verse 18 Zechariah said unto the angel whereby shall I know this for I am an old man and my wife Elizabeth well stricken in years limiting God limiting God the angel said your prayer is answered why did you pray if you are not expecting God will answer why were you asking God if you are not expecting a response from the Lord? Your prayer is answered. It's not only the prayer you have prayed tonight, all the prayers you have been praying before. And you have given up and you thought God did not hear. Of course God heard. He reserved the miracle for tonight. He reserved the power for tonight. All the, and all the prayers you have prayed, God has bundled everything together and the answer is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. Point number three now, supernatural signs from the unlimited God. Supernatural signs from the unlimited God. God will give you signs and wonders. From now on, you know when you wake up in the morning, whatever your desires are, whatever your prayers are, Whatever the promises of God are in the word of God, for you know this is mine. Every day will be a blessed day. Every day will be a fulfilling day. Every day will be a day of blessing in your life. Because you remove the limit in your mind in the power of God. And then you are going to see great, wonderful things in your life throughout the rest of your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 13. Exodus chapter 14. We're looking at verse 13. What a wonderful God we serve. Look at verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more. How long? Forever. Maybe you've read that verse before, but you don't understand. Oh, I understand. I know what it says. It says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Let me tell you what you don't understand. These children of Israel were slaves in Egypt. 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. They have been there for a long time. Centuries. And they have been oppressed by the Egyptians. They look that the Egyptians are the most powerful. They look that the Egyptians as unconquerable. They look that the Egyptians as terrorizing masters. Eventually, God delivered them out of Egypt. And now they came to the border of the river, the Red Sea, mountain on this side, mountain on that side. And then the Jesus were coming from behind the old master, the unconquerable enemies, the unconquerable oppressors, oppressing them, coming. And they began to cry out, we are done. We are destroyed. We are going to die. Is there no grave in, in Egypt? We should have died over there. Look at what is happening now. These people are going to finish us. And look at what Moses says. says Stand still. Don't be afraid. All those things that arise to you until this day, you will not be afraid of them anymore. Centuries of curses, the Lord is going to take away tonight. Centuries of oppression, the Lord is going to take away tonight. You know, these 
generations of curses, generations of yokes, generations of slavery, generations of captivity, generations of deformity. The Lord is going to take everything away in Jesus' name. You're not going to do anything. Christ will do everything for you. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because these Egyptians, terrorizing enemies who have seen all these many years, you will see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Look at verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. That they go forward. I said you will go forward. In your spiritual life, move forward. In your courage and confidence and faith in the Lord, move forward. In your family, move forward. In that business you have laid your hand upon, move forward. In serving the Lord, in joy, in prayer, excitement, serving the Lord, move forward. And then in having, in receiving the miracle signs and the wonders of the Lord, you'll move forward in Jesus' name. The Lord will fight your battles for you. All the fighting of the past, you know, I will conquer this, I will conquer that. You'll find that Calvary has destroyed the power of your enemy. And all the fighting will not be necessary anymore. You will move forward into the blessings of the Lord in Jesus' name. And then it says, For thou shalt lift up, verse 16, thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Well, already you've heard about the miracle. Moses stretched out the rod and the river parted for them. For the weakest of the children of Israel, the smallest of the children of Israel, the youngest of the children of Israel, and the oldest, the most aged of the children of Israel, the river was patient, remained open until everybody passed over. Can you think of, can you think of, can you think of two million people, three million people, can you think of them just passing over like that? Even if there were, let's say, 10,000 in a row moving, it will still be a long line. And then they were moving on. Some of them were weak, some of them aged and all that. And everybody passed over one by one. When the last one passed over, then the Egyptians, they came in. And they came in with confidence and with, you know, with real anger, and they were going to destroy the children of Israel. Well, follow them. When they got to the middle, God said, Moses, strike back the rod, and the water closed on them. You have overcome already. Every little child in this church, every young person in this church, the least in this church, you will pass over to the other side. And when you confront a Red Sea, when you confront an impassable river, that impassable river will open up before you in Jesus' name. There's a rod that is greater than the rod of Moses. It's called the rod of the stem of, of, of Jesse. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he stretches his power, when he stretches his grace, his authority over the river of your life, everything will divide in Jesus' name. That's the assurance we have. And if your enemies try to follow you, the Lord is going to surprise you and surprise them. You will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Remember we're talking about supernatural signs from the unlimited God. As you follow this God, he'll give you signs. Signs and wonders, miracles, manifestation, demonstration of power and strength. It says in verse 14, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name 
Emmanuel. Think about that. Think about that. A kind of miracle that never happened until Jesus was born. Something that scientifically was impossible, biologically impossible, historically impossible, geographically impossible, nationally impossible. And God said that things that look impossible all around by every consideration you can give, impossibilities will be becoming possible in your life in Jesus' name. It's a sign that he said he will give. And then eventually, look at how the sign was fulfilled. I'm reading, I'm reading now in Luke to see the fulfillment of that sign. We're looking at Luke chapter 1 from verse 30. Luke chapter 1. We're looking at verse 30. In Luke chapter 1 verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. When God is about to fulfill the sign that he spoke about, he will give you favor. One is about to fulfill the promises he has given to you. It will give you favor. And that favor will produce signs and wonders in your life. And you will say, oh, you praise the Lord. This God is a faithful God. It's a God that cannot fail. A God that will not fail. But start your one. And, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. You know, there, these are some of the things that people count impossible. But we're learning now that we cannot limit God. Whatever he has said, all those things will come to pass. And then it goes on to say... In verse 34, then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. She was a virgin. And as a sign, the Lord said, He will give a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, God with us. And the angel answered, verse 35, and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Your own time has come. For with God, the angel said, for with God, angels that, you know, have been with God for such a long time, the angel said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me, according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Look at verse 45. Blessed is she. Verse 45. Blessed is she. Are there blessed people here tonight? Bless this out of a blessed. Whatever God has promised, it saves, it sanctifies, it fills and baptizes, envelopes, immerses in the Holy Ghost. He delivers, he heals, he turns things around, he works miracles, and he destroys the power of the enemy. And he is able to provide for the need of everyone. There's God. And this is the condition of having that fulfilled in our lives. Look at verse 45. Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance. In your life, there shall be a performance. The promises of God will receive a demonstration, a performance in your life in Jesus' name. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her, from the Lord, a performance, a performance, a performance. From this night, the life will become a life of performance. The Lord will do it. I said the Lord will do it. Now Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. What do you mean from verse 18? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me 
are for signs and wonders. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. Look at your family. Are you a father? I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and wonders. Are you a mother? A mother there? I and the children. Signs, wonders, and miracles will come to your children. I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and wonders. Are you a leader? Sectional leader in the church? Are you a leader, a pastor in the church? Are you a leader, an overseer in the church? Are you a leader? And then you are people under your leadership. I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and for wonders. Look at this whole church. You are a child of God in this church. I want you to realize this unlimited God will begin to work wonders in your life. Here is the promise has given us as a church. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and were for wonders. And now, believers, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. I don't want to ask uh, the question, is any believer there? Because I know you are believers. I said I know you are believers. I said I know you are believers. These signs shall follow them that believe. Where are they? I said, where are they? Stand up and receive signs and wonders. Our God is unlimited. Our God is unlimited. Our God is unlimited. He can heal. He can save. Mighty to save. Mighty to heal. Mighty to deliver. Mighty to set free. He sets the captives free. He sets the captive free. Take away all that doubt in your mind. Don't limit God anymore. All those who limit God, they are short-sighted. God will do what he said he will do. And God will perform everything he said he will perform. Rest your mind. Rest your mind. Rest your mind. Believers are candidates for miracles. Believers are for signs and for wonders. Rest your mind. You know that this is your chance and this is your day and this is your time. Release yourself into the hands of the Lord. And thereby release the hand of God to work in an unlimited way in your life. He can. He will. Miracles for everyone. Healing for the sick. Deliverance for the oppressed. Children for the barren. Jobs for the jobless. Happiness for the sorrowful. Salvation for the sinner. Forgiveness for the guilty. Strength for the weak. Ability. For those who are important. Knowledge for the ignorant. Success for failures. Trust the Lord. With him, all things are possible. Trust the Lord. He will not fail. He cannot fail. Believe there shall be a performance of those things that are spoken by the mouth of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And the faithful, believing people of God said, Amen. Raise up your hand for a definite thing from, definite, definite thing from the Father in the name of Jesus. We bless your name. We know that you are the unlimited God. And Lord, we pray the power that created the whole universe will now work in every life in Jesus' name. Spiritual miracle. Physical miracle, family miracle, professional miracle, the desires of the people of God fulfilled in Jesus' name. 
strength for the weak, power for the powerless, miracle for those who are in need. Do it in Jesus' name. I command every mountain of problem in your life, mountain, move away in Jesus' name. Every incurable disease, I take authority over you. Incurable disease, be healed in Jesus' name. All those long-standing causes and yokes and problems, I command all those long-standing problems, get out in Jesus' name. Everything you have promised and your people are trusting you tonight, let there be signs and wonders in every life. Manifest your power in every life. Lord, the miracle with each person's name attached unto it, give to them right now. Fulfill your word. Give miracle and give testimony to every mouth. Let there be at least one sign, at least one wonder, at least one miracle, at least one healing, at least one provision, at least one deliverance, at least one something to rejoice about for everyone in Jesus' name. Confirm your power in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. The miracle is there with you already.